and welcome. This will be the final, the final lab that we videotape for the school year. This is the big one. This is the fish lab in cooperation with the Southwest Native Aquatic Recovery and Resources Center, uh, what was once known as the Dexter National Fish Hatchery. I uh, want to say a special thank you to Casey Booth and Hannah and Alexis and uh, Martha and everybody else that was out uh, helping the students the last two days. They had a fabulous time. I think they learned something and uh, I was just surprised at how they got into it. All right, so this is the fish lab. Now we have two fish that they bring us. We have a rainbow trout that they bring for us to look at and they also bring <coughs> a catfish and these are raised at the New Mexico State if I understand correctly these are raised at the New Mexico State uh, fish hatchery in Santa Rosa and the personnel here in Dexter run up there early in the morning they get the fish they load them up they bring them back and they bring them to us so that we can do the laboratory and the laboratory I have the paper right here fish lab 2017 and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go down the fish lab <clears throat> and fill it out and while I'm filling it out I'm going to kind of give you an overview of what it was that we were doing in the lab now I'm not an expert the experts are all gone so um, I'm not going to claim to know everything but I am going to run you through the laboratory so that you know what we're doing. First of all, the first question is, what species of fish do you have? Well, again, here we have the rainbow trout, and as you can see, it does have kind of a rainbow color to it as it glares in, or as it, the sunlight glances off of it. And then we have the catfish over here. So we have two kinds. What happened was the kids were paired up one had each kind of fish and then they could do comparisons as they were doing the laboratory between their different fish that they had. Two, it says measure the length of your fish using the ruler at your desk. Every student received a rule that says what is the total length in inches and then what is the total length in centimeters. So what they were doing was they were taking a ruler and we had longer rulers but they were going to measure from nose to tail so that's about six inches and to the tail was another four so this fish is approximately ten inches long and then if we did this in centimeters then of course we would just use the metric side and that's fifteen centimeters to there and to the tail is another ten so approximately twenty five centimeters so that was question number two next they wanted to know how many fins does your fish have? Does it have a dorsal fin? The dorsal fin being the one on the back, whoops, being the one on the back here, there is a dorsal fin on this fish. Then it wanted to know is there a pelvic fin? Yes, there's a pelvic fin down here. Uh, caudal fin, the caudal fin is the fin in the back. That's the one that swishes to make the fish move through the water. Yes, it has a caudal fin. If you look at our catfish though, you will notice that its caudal fin has more of a V shape. So that's one of the differences in the caudal fins between the two fishes. Uh, does it have any other fin? Oh, pectoral fins. Pectoral fins are these fins that are right up here because your pectoral muscles are up at the top of your muscles, or at the top of your chest. And then I wanted to know if it had any other fins. Well, ours has this fin down here. This is an anal fin because if you're looking, I can, the, I can see this on the camera. There's a little red hole right here. This is the vent or the anus of the fish. So most of the reproductive organs are up here in the middle area of the fish. This is the vent here. This is the muscle back here for swishing the caudal fin to propel the fish through the water. Next question says lift, lift the upper column or the gill cover and observe the gills. So the 
upper column is this bony plate that's right here. And if we lift this bony plate up, and let's we'll see if I can't zoom it a little bit. There we go. Underneath are where the gills of the fish are. And as we were looking today, we were actually looking. Let me set that down. Get my handy dandy probe here. Trade hands, because I have a glove on this other one. And I'm trying to work around the camera here. So we're going to lift this. And underneath is one set of gills. They're like little feathers with little hairs on them. There's another set here and there's another set here. So there's three layers of gills. So as the fish moves through the water it brings the water in through its mouth and it pushes it out over those tiny filaments and that is how the fish breathes. And then of course, why does a fish need gills? Well, these fish require oxygen in order to survive, just like human beings. The trout here needs an oxygen level of approximately 5 to 6 percent oxygen in the water that it's in, because it likes that. And then our catfish over here, our catfish over here, he, since he's a bottom feeder, not as much oxygen in the bottom of a body of water. And our catfish only needs like 3 to 4 percent oxygen in order to survive. So, in other words, so we still have two different fish. Number four, knowing number three, name one internal organ people have that fish do not. Well, of course, we have lungs in order to breathe, human beings needing 14 percent oxygen level, and thankfully our atmosphere is up around 20 percent, so we have a little bit of oxygen to spare at the moment. Then the number five says, gently open the mouth as wide as possible. Examine the mouth cavity. Does this fish have a tongue? Does it have teeth? How does this compare with the other group's fish? So, I'm going to have to gently move my fish. Yes, there's a little bit of blood down there. And I'm going to set his mouth up like this so we can peek in there. And then what I was telling the students to do today was to go ahead and open the fish's mouth as wide as you can go. And yeah, there is kind of a tongue-like appendage in here. And then what else we wanted to do was we wanted to look in there and see what was in there. And as you can see, there's light coming off the end. Well, this bony plate helps to get the water on through to the gills, but if we go deeper in there, we're going to go into the esophagus. But I also wanted them to take their pinky finger and run it on the inside and see if there was any teeth. And of course, since trout are carnivores, they do have some teeth in there. So, you can see the light. Let me see if I can get that where you can see. See the light? There's the gills in the background. So this is the inside of the fish. And that's also why when people catch fish, they can put them on those leaders and run it from the gills through the mouth. And it really doesn't hurt the fish because they can still breathe and pump water over their gills. Uh, fish have teeth. How does this compare with the other fish? Well, our tr uh, the catfish does not have teeth. It has some little nibs like sandpaper over the lips. Then it says, let's lift the flap up to look inside the fish. So I'm going to pull my fish gently back. One of the things that we were trying to get the kids to understand today is that we really wanted them to respect the fish. And this is the liberal, commie, leaning, leftist type statement that we're going to make, but hear it out the whole thing before you judge. This fish was alive when it was brought here today. And it was purposely, uh, its life was purposely ended so that we could study it and the students could study how living things, the inside of a living thing worked. And so we're trying to discourage the students from just hacking um, the remains up. So 
Uh, when we say we wanted them to respect the fish, that's exactly what it is. We, you know, for thousands of years, people have eaten fish as sustenance and to provide nourishment. And for the most part, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen a native group or any group that used fish in a large scale ever disrespect the animal. They always are do what they need to do, but they're not going to hack it into little pieces just for the fun of it. Okay, so now we're going to lift, we're going to lift the hood here and take a look underneath the hood. And we may have to do a little bit more cutting, but that's okay. Oh, no, we can see. Yeah, we can see in there. It says, can you identify the swim bladder? Well, the swim bladder is this clear, there it is, there it is. The swim bladder is this clear balloon that's inside. The swim bladder is what helps the fish go up and down in the water. And our color of ours is um, clear. Here in the catfish, and I can move this over so we can see inside the catfish. The catfish, their swim bladder, is this there we go. The swim bladder in the catfish is that white. Is this white balloon right here? And yes, it is gas filled. Some of the kids were popping them um, just to see what would happen. I really don't want to because the fish are getting a little older. They've been here all day. And as you can see, the fly is buzzing around. Plus, uh, you can't smell it, but it does smell like fish in here. Then they want to know what color is the liver and the kidney. So what we, what we did for the students was we gave them we gave them a drawing of the internal organs of the fish. And I'll point out a few of the organs that I know as we go here. So we're going to lift the hood up here again and look underneath. And I think what I'm going to end up doing is I want to cut this flap of skin off. So if you just bear with for a second. I don't want to get too deep in here, but I do want to make this where we can see what's happening. We were also talking about voluntary and involuntary functions. These fish, the way that they dispatch them is there's a poison in the water and the poison's like a, a toxin and it, it takes care of the fish quite quickly. And the fish is then brain dead. And then what they do is they'll uh, cut the fish, they'll do the incisions for us. Uh, and in some of the fish, the hearts, which is an involuntary muscle, will still be beating. So. We're going to look, we're going to move his pectoral fin out of the way here. And inside we have the liver, we have the intestines. Uh, going back, we have a fat layer right here. This down here in the bottom is the large intestine, which leads to the vent. If I open that up, there's going to be poop in it, fecal matter, so we're not going to open it up. But that's just some of them, and we, of course we can we can use our probe, just a second here, we can use our probe and we can get underneath and we can see the spleen and the gallbladder, we can move things around and see the stomach if we wanted to. Um, the heart is deep, deep in there. We're not going to go, I'm not going to go hacking this fish up. I'm just kind of running through the lab so you can see what they were doing today. So, there's that. Um, find the heart. What does the heart do? The heart is, the heart is actually, and if you'll go, to, I'll, I'll see about posting some pictures. But if you go to my Facebook page or if you go to the Dexter New Mexico Middle School Facebook page, you'll be able to see some. But the heart is up under this flap under here. So 
Uh, again, I'm not going to go um, hacking the fish up to get that in there. Now, which species of fish has the longer intestines? Because trout are carnivores, they have a shorter intestine than the catfish. So we were comparing that. We wanted to know if our fish was male or female. Let me do a quick check over here. We had several catfish today that were female because they had an egg sac inside. So we knew immediately that they were female. Let me open Mr. Catfish here. And no, there is no egg sac. The egg sac would be right in this area here. We don't see one, but we do see his intestinal tract. We do see the swim bladder. Uh, we do see part of the gonad up in here. If we were to come up underneath the front flap, we would find his stomach, the gallbladder, um, and his heart. And then, of course, we ask the students to then go through their fish and identify the different parts that they could identify using the handout that we gave them. All right, so that is the overview of the fish lab. Hope you enjoyed it. This will be the final laboratory for the 2016-2017 Dexter New Mexico Middle School school year. I will not be back next year. Uh, due to the state budget crisis and due to my wife having found a job on the other side of the state, um, I have uh, been looking for another job and I will hopefully be gainfully employed in northwestern New Mexico for the next school year. However, please continue to come back. It's my hope that either I will continue to be able to post some videos to the channel occasionally for you or the new teacher will be posting videos to the, new Mexico, the Dexter New Mexico uh, Middle School YouTube page. Thank you very much for watching. It's been a pleasure doing the videos for you.